All right, good Thursday morning, everybody, live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a look at what's going on across the Mid-South where it comes to the possibility of more problems when it comes to what's happening with what's left of Hurricane, then Tropical Storm, now Tropical Depression, Harvey, which is now making its way into and through the Mid-South area over the course of about the next uh, couple of hours, next few days as well. Going to be seeing again the possibility of more more problems with that uh, coming up later on today, especially in the form of gusty winds. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Got any questions? Drop them into the comments section. We'd love to know more about what your questions are about the forecast. We'll have more details on that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Got to get more details about the forecast. Again, we'll go ahead and bring in our Facebook uh, patron, so everybody can see a little bit more about what's happening here. And as of right now, if you are just joining us again, we do have little, if anything, really taking place immediately outside of some scattered showers. Looks like audio is doing well on Facebook for right now. Definitely good news on that after the audio problems we've had over the last couple of days. So as of right now, we'll go ahead and get going and show you more about what's happening. So good Thursday morning again to everybody. Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, thanks for joining us for a complete update as to what's going on. Forecast in the blue bar right here. And as you read, as this goes across here, lots of showers and thunderstorms today. Also looking again for the possibility of some strong weather into the Mid-South, maybe even some severe weather. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little while. Currently a lot of cloud cover across the Mid-South, tropical weather out there, breezy, a little bit cooler, and a lot of rainfall taking place at this time, but we do not have anything in the way of severe weather immediately. We do have a lot going on where it comes to plenty of rainfall across the Mid-South. Radar at this time is again showing decent amounts of rainfall out there and we'll continue to see a lot more of that throughout the course of the rest of the day. So we've got again plenty of that shower and thunderstorm activity going on for this morning. Most of the heaviest stuff has been across portions of northeastern Arkansas just north of the metro area and Shelby County at this time. Uh, Diane Wingo, when will the rain end? not for quite some time. It's going to be about a day and a half before we get rid of all the rain uh, going into the weekend. Heaviest rainfall, got some thunderstorms over portions of northeastern Arkansas from around Manila, I-55 back to around I-40 into around northeastern Arkansas, and all that is making its way out across the Mid-South area. These are the bands of what is rotating around the leftover center of Harvey. That is going to be moving its way into the area. We also have a flash flood warning going in to effect for about the next couple of hours. That's in effect for Poinsett, northwestern Crittenden, and northern Cross County in this morning hour. Two to three inches of rainfall in these locations that you see here, and then also another two to three inches will be on the way as we Look down to the south. More showers and thunderstorms across eastern Arkansas. Some of that string over into parts of West Tennessee moving through the metro area earlier this morning, but definitely more possibilities of rain showers and thunderstorms and many more of these flash flood warnings out there across the Mid-South. We have a couple of flash flood watches to tell you about out there, and we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little while. Let's get to the tropics and show you more about what's going on out there. Again, what's left of Harvey is continuing to make its way up and into the Mid-South. We also have way off to the south of us and well east of us, just off of Africa, between the Leeward and the Cape Verde Islands, we have again Tropical Storm Irma. This is expected to be a Category 2 hurricane within the next couple of days. So this is going to be strengthening very quickly. Irma could be making its way into and around the area close to the area of the Leeward Islands relatively within about a several days or so. But the computer models, as you can see, kind of wibbly-wobbly here, not exactly getting us a lot of anything in the way of major amounts of problems yet. But this is generally heading toward the east coast of the United States and could be a bit of a problem there. We'll talk more about uh, what's going to be seeing that coming up here in just a little bit. Julia Cavallo, welcome uh, to the show. Deborah Jane Williams Spiegel, how much rain in the Humboldt area? We'll talk about rain coming up in just a little bit. Rosetta Wiggins O'Kelly, how bad will it be for game time at Tigers? We'll talk about that as well. And how bad is it going to be at 12 o'clock? Angie Rose, how much rain will we get down here in Walls, Mississippi? Julia Cavallo, we'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. Currently seeing again the track of what's left of Harvey 
moving its way through the Mid-South, not quite as far back to the west as the previous forecasts were. Now this is leaning mainly into around northern Mississippi, right around Oxford, down toward around Batesville, and just to the north of the Vicksburg area, tracking up into the Tennessee River Valley over the next few days. It is a tropical depression now. It is still a named storm and will continue to be so. It looks like it's going to be just south of the metro area right around 7 o'clock tonight, and that's going to bring in some fairly breezy winds out there, maybe topping about 35 to 45 miles per hour at times. Uh, Denny Pan, hope I'm saying that right. Good morning to you. Thanks for stopping on by. Latest estimates from the National Hurricane Center regarding what's going on here. Again, in the orange shaded categories, we're looking at a pretty decent amount of rainfall. So from the metro area into around northern parts of Mississippi, say around Bihalia, north of Ripley, uh, Holly Springs, north of there up to the river and Mississippi River and then back into Middle Tennessee. That area that you see there in orange, that is going to be about six inches plus of rainfall. And there could be, according to the National Weather Service, anywhere in this area, the possibility of maybe double-digit rainfall. We're talking 10 inches plus in some locations. Now, that's nowhere what we saw with Harvey. No question about that down toward Texas. But this is going to be the possibility of getting into some fairly dangerous conditions, including flash flooding. If you have not seen anything of this yet, again, we've got numerous flash flood warnings and flash flood watches in effect for most of the Mid-South area including, again, the only one the county that's not really included in this uh, at this point in time is right around Craighead County in Arkansas. And that is, again, because Jonesboro and everything to the east of that is where the heaviest rainfall is going to be expected for later on today. Currently seeing that rotation making its way a little bit closer to us as we look on the uh, P uh, Penn State Meteorology Group page. You can see the rotation right there over northeast Louisiana. That's the center part of Harvey making its way into around very close to the Mid-South area. And that's going to continue as it gets a little bit closer to us into the next few days. Now the good news is it's going to be launching up and away from here. It looks like that cold front is going to be doing a good job of keeping this kind of shepherded out and away from us. So we will be seeing some clearer skies making their way in with that drier air behind that cold front sooner rather than later. So the entire weekend is not going to be a washout on this. National Weather Service again, warning of life-threatening flash flooding. If you live in, drive through, or work near any low-lying areas, rivers, creeks, streams, anything like that, that's where you're going to have to watch out for what's going on where it comes to anything involving water that could sweep you away. Never drive through water-covered roadways. Find another way to get to where you're going. We also have that possibility of severe weather uh, in the Mid-South in the red bar here. Again, the possibility of isolated tornadoes. We cannot rule those out. With that turning in the atmosphere, part of the interior part of the storm is moving very very quickly, but the exterior part is moving very slowly, and the difference between those two can start up some uh, atmospheric motion that could lead to tornadoes. So we are going to have to take that into effect. We're also going to have to watch again for the possibility of more breeze out there. A wind advisory has been posted for the Mid-South through today and into Friday midday for uh, winds that could be around sustained. It's going to get a lot breezier than what it is right now. Winds of 25 to 35 miles per hour this evening into overnight. Gusts of 45 miles per hour plus could be a possible problem out there. Here's what we're going to be looking for into the rest of the day today. Again, chances of rainfall from what we're going to be looking at for right now. I'm going to take this full screen on Facebook so everybody can see this a little bit more easier here, and everybody on Twitter and Periscope can see it pretty well. Uh, the chances of rain, again, through about 1 o'clock this afternoon, the heaviest activity is going to be moving its way into around southeastern parts of Arkansas, northwestern parts of Mississippi, and we're going to be talking about 2 to 3 inches more rainfall there into the course of the next several hours. Then into tonight... As we go through about 7 o'clock tonight, great big blob of colors showing again the best possibility, whoops, hang on a second, showing the best possibility of rainfall again into and around the area from eastern Arkansas right back through Jackson, basically along the I-40 corridor and down into northern parts of Mississippi. 
This is going to be the best possibility of heavy rainfall. Notice that we're talking about nearly four inches in the metro area alone, and that is going to be causing flash flooding with, again, debris in the roadways gathering in the culverts and blocking off the storm drains. This could be a very big possibility tonight that could lead to more problems, including crashes and slowdowns and detours and things like that. So we are looking at some very heavy amounts of rainfall with this storm coming on through for today and into tonight. We're just seeing the beginning portions of this right now. A lot more to come as we get into the rest of the day. Jeanette Frazier, welcome from Myrtle, Mississippi. Katie Yarbrough-Bell, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for the uh, kind words on there. Uh, let's see what else we got on here. Kathy Perry from Hernando. Yes, you will be getting a decent amount of rainfall uh, at this point. Again, right down around Hernando and back up into southwest Tennessee and extreme eastern Arkansas. That's where you're going to be getting the bulk of the rainfall. Let's talk a little bit more about winds at this time. Easterly throughout much of the rest of the morning and into early this afternoon, winds will be picking up and increasing through about this afternoon, about lunchtime. These are in knots, but close enough to miles per hour for you to get the idea. Heading home from work or school today, very brief easy winds out of the northeast as the center of circulation approaches, which you can see on the maps, making its way into northwestern Mississippi by about drive time tonight. These are just the sustained winds on here. Let's go for wind gusts and show you that at first, not really much is happening. Again, right into and around eastern parts of the viewing area, winds of about 10 to 15 miles per hour, but really starting to pick up as we go into around this afternoon, including some wind speeds possibly gusting to around uh, what we talked about earlier. Notice the colors up here to about 40 miles per hour as we go home tonight, so it's going to be very, very choppy on the roadways today as those winds make their way into the area, especially for north-south driving as those winds push against your vehicle. That could be a very big problem into this evening. So wind gusts a bit of a problem. Rainfall is going to be a problem. We'll talk about severe weather in just a little bit. Showers and thunderstorms continue right on in through this evening. And into around midnight, another three to four inches of rainfall possible as this thing moves its way out of the picture, heading back on over to the east of us. So more chances of showers and thunderstorms out there driving dropping even more heavy rainfall. So some parts of the Mid-South could easily, as you saw the forecast that we were talking about earlier for today, talking about 6 to 10 inches of rainfall. I don't think that's going to be out of the question at this point because of just the fact that all that rain is going to be gathered across much of the area close to around West Tennessee and North Mississippi. So this is something that is going to be imperative to keep an eye on at this point in time as we watch for all this rainfall to head on through. Now tonight, uh, 7 o'clock, let's see what's going on about the time the Tigers game is going on. Winds will be very breezy out of the northeast at about 20 to 25 miles per hour at Liberty Bowl. Winds, again, Again, centered down here in the center of circulation over northern Mississippi will be a lot lighter. There is going to be kind of an eye to the storm to this. Winds are going to be swirling around that area, but as this thing goes across, say, Oxford, Batesville, Clarksdale, uh, Crenshaw, Coldwater, you may see winds really drop as the center of this storm makes its way on through. So that's going to be something interesting to watch. But we are going to see that storm system again lift its way out of the area. There goes the center of circulation way back over to the Tennessee River Valley as we go into well overnight tonight. But we are still going to be seeing wind gusts of nearly 45 miles per hour plus. Some of these will be centered right up around portions of northwest Tennessee. And that's going to be giving us again some very breezy conditions, very choppy driving between Dyersburg, Jackson, Nutbush, Covington, uh, north of Brownsville in that area, back up around Gibson County, could see some very breezy winds. Then, as we get as my camera slides all over the place here for tonight. Sorry about that. Uh, watching the wind gusts die down as we go into very early tomorrow morning, but around the time Todd Demers is on the air with daybreak, we could still see some winds gusting to around 30 miles per hour as the system finally moves out of the picture. Chances of rainfall, again, going from really heavy to just sporadic chances of rainfall. And as we get into tomorrow, temperatures will be back around the lower uh, 
80s or so, and the chances of rain will be with us early during the day, leaving the area as we head into Friday night. So we will see more chances of rainfall lingering across parts of the area, but that should be about it. How about severe weather? We do still stand that chance. It looks like the target zone has shifted by just a little bit. We are seeing again that slight risk category taking place northeast Mississippi and a small part of southwest Tennessee, Hardeman, McNary, Hardin counties for the most part back toward the Tennessee River Valley. And yes, there is that marginal threat here close to the metro area, but most of it is east of the Mississippi and heading back over to the Tennessee River Valley, Alabama, northwest Georgia, south middle Tennessee for the most part. And yes, we cannot rule out the possibility of isolated tornadoes out across much of the area. Prime threat is going to be flash flooding. This is not a hail threat. We do not have much of a chance of hail out there. Winds will be a problem. Again, gusty, damaging winds in that particular area. Tornadic threat is again going to be focused mainly across northeastern areas of Mississippi and that is again going to be a bit of a problem out there for a lot of everybody else again in northeast Mississippi not quite so much for northwest Tennessee northeast Arkansas or northwest Mississippi but here's the thing everybody in the viewing area needs to pay attention to this so there is going to be a threat of tornadoes out there and please keep yourself safe out there for today Dustin Brumfield a fellow ham radio operator Thank you very much. Definitely want to keep your batteries charged on this in case power goes out, and that is a possible problem for tonight. So stay safe out there yourself, sir. Joy Tapper, thank you very much for joining us and for the kind words out there for this morning. And once again, uh, looking at the possibility of severe weather out, that looks like, yes, that is a brand new forecast uh, from the National uh, Storm Prediction Center and showing it now the main threat for severe weather well to the east of the area. But again, that does wander into parts of the Mid-South, including the Metro. So we will be watching this throughout the rest of the day. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 via social media. We've got tons of weather information out there available, again, on my Facebook page if you'd like to see more about what's going on there. Twitter is going to be very active for today, so follow along there. We'll be posting more videos on my YouTube channel if you'd like to see more about that. And of course, we'll be checking in with the National Hurricane Center to keep an eye on both what's left of Harvey and also of Tropical Storm Irma. You can catch my forecast on AM 730 on Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh. That's available right now from 8 o'clock through 9 o'clock on AM 730 or go to talkbacklivenetwork.org for more information. More details on the forecast, including what you're going to be seeing over the next several days, go to wreg.com slash weather for more details on that. And again, more information on what's going on out there with Storm Tracker 3S. That'll be on News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day, so definitely want to keep an eye on what's happening there. More updates on the complete forecast out there. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, not quite dodging a bullet just yet, but we are going to be seeing some breezy conditions. We may not get the severe weather, but or at least a lot of the severe weather, but we do still need to be paying attention to this. Everybody in the Mid-South from, again, Forest City through Jackson, Tennessee, uh, from Dyersburg down to Oxford, everybody needs to be watching this very carefully. So definitely want to stay safe out there throughout the rest of the day. Updates again, wreg.com slash weather. If you'd like to contact me on anything else, that blue bar up there, austin.onic and wreg.com. And you can find out more about what's going on with the forecast there. And we'll be keeping you updated throughout the course of the rest of the day. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the early morning edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Stay tuned for much more coming up with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day on air and online.